Hey everybody, welcome to PartsCounterGuru.com. Jay here, and I'm here today to talk to you about a new Wi-Fi router that I had to purchase. I mean, I'm pulling my hair out trying to figure out all these issues that I'm having with streaming, and I can't figure it out. And I'm running up against, you know, you need 802.11ac, 802.11.ax, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6. What is all this stuff, man? Well, you know what? I had to do my homework and figure out on my own what I really needed. And it was an enlightening process to go through. And I can tell you that I think everybody out there, if you're having issues with streaming, you need to pay attention to this uh, this product review, as well as some of the advice that I'm about to give you in trying to determine what you really need for your needs. So today we're gonna to talk about what I purchased, which is the Netgear Nighthawk AX. The model number is RAX75. Um, I'm going to get into some of the details about that, how to set it up, how easy it was to set up, and just some of the things you can do with this thing versus older uh, Wi-Fi routers. So hang in there, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, um, so let's explain what the Netgear Nighthawk AX8 RAX75 router is. I mean, it's, it's, that's a lot of jargon to throw out at you. I know it, and, and, but I think, you know, yes, they could have simplified it, and I think they really are because if you notice on the packaging, they mention, you know, the, the, the Wi-Fi 6 and AX8. Well, they, they mean a lot of, you know, a couple of things, and that really they mean the same thing, Wi-Fi 6 and AX. AX is the new standard, 802.11ax, okay? Uh, the 8 just stands for it's capable of streaming up to eight devices simultaneously with no issues. You might find one out there with an AX12 where you can stream up to 12 devices, you know? That's that's fine. It's whatever whatever you want to do is going to, you know, is going to dictate the needs so for your router. So you need to do your homework on that depending on what's going on in your household or your business. This is this is for my studio, my podcasting studio, and uh, where I podcast, I actually podcast in the middle of an area where it's highly congested with Wi-Fi signals. And if you look to select uh, a network on my list, it, it's crazy. There's probably you know ten that show up that have full bars, and I look at the channels, you know the the, the spectrum that they're on. And they're all on similar channels. So that creates a lot of noise, interference, if you will. And so what happens is the Wi-Fi signals begin to compete against each other. So that's why it's important that you select a device that is a dual spectrum, 2.4 gigahertz and 5.0 gigahertz um, simultaneous. It's very, very important that you have that because then your quality of service is going to go up. And we'll get into quality of service here in just a minute as well. So, but I just wanted to kind of explain, you know, some of the stuff on the packaging. It may be a little intimidating, but it's really not that hard. You know, like I said to you going back, you know, moments ago, I was talking about, you know, Wi-Fi 1 through 6. You know, the Wi-Fi 6 is the newest. It is the latest. There are only a few devices out there in, in the market that are actually capable of hitting a Wi-Fi 6 and using it to its full uh, potential. Um, so, But don't let that intimidate you because what you also want to do is be building for the future. So let's get into what I had. Um, I had two devices. I had an Apple Airport Extreme, which was the uh, old Wi-Fi 4 standard. It was the 802.11n standard. This was a model number A1354. Man, for its time, it was fantastic. It, it's an Apple product. I, I use a lot of Apple stuff. I have a MacBook Pro, and you know, I have an iMac. I've got iPads, and you know, there we go with all these devices, right? So that's what I'm talking about. You need to be ready for all these things, and this is where Wi-Fi 6 technology comes into play, guys. Wi-Fi 6 technology is very important in this modern day and time where there are so many devices streaming, and those around you are doing the same thing. So anyway, I thought that I could really fix my signal problem by adding this to my network, and basically this is an airport 
uh, extreme time capsule. And but it is a fifth generation. I think the model number on this was an A1470. Uh, it operated on the A802.11 AC standard or Wi-Fi 5 standard and still does. And it works fine. But um, it has no quality of service option on it. So I can't give priority to certain devices within my network, which is very important when you do what I do. Um, so I knew it was time. I did it. And uh, I had to say goodbye, goodbye to this. Okay, guys, before we get into some of the features on the app and, and setting up the router, I wanted to have a real quick conversation with you about the new Wi-Fi standards and then the standards that have come before Wi-Fi 6. And we always call these the standards by what they actually were, 802.11b, A, G, N, A, C, and now A, X. But to simplify things um, for most people, they decided to add the Wi-Fi 6 and then back to Wi-Fi 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Um, anybody out there, I doubt very seriously you're going to have anything earlier than that's compatible earlier, you know, to a G. Probably going to be everything 802.11 and later. So now the reason why I did what I did is because I had two pieces of equipment that were Apple products that are no longer supported by Apple. And they are routers that were one, my airport extreme was an 802.11n and my repeater and my uh, airport uh, time capsule was 802.11ac. So I kind of, in to some degree, was creating a bit of a conflict within my, my domain here um, on my network. Uh, so I was constantly fighting to try to get a good signal and to exacerbate the problem that I was having I live in a condominium, so I've got 30 neighbors that are doing the same thing that I'm doing, and they're streaming multiple devices. So it created a bit of a problem for me when I was podcasting or simply just trying to stream uh, a movie on Netflix or something. So my move to the 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6 is to... Um, open up that that super highway, highway, if you will, the Wi-Fi highway for me so that I can stream multiple devices and also not compete against my neighbors that are doing the same thing. So to be very clear, the 802.11ax standard or Wi-Fi 6 standard is not necessarily faster. Um, yes, there are some improved speeds, no doubt about it, but what why you get that is because it's two simultaneous uh, bands at one time that it is smart connecting. In other words, the router is allowing you to connect to whichever band is available on whatever specific channel um, that's available so that you're not having any issues with connectivity and you're going to have seamless streaming. So that was the whole point behind me upgrading to this, even though I don't have any Wi-Fi 6 or AX pieces of equipment yet. The only two pieces of equipment out there that I am aware of at the moment is the Samsung Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus. But I foresee in 2020 and definitely in 2021, you're going to have a lot more devices out there that are that are uh, AX standard or Wi-Fi 6 standard. And you're going to really need this type of router in order to, to enjoy the um, uh, what it can do for you. So that's why I went to this. I am building for the future, and I would suggest that everybody else out, out there does as well. So enough of that technical you're stuff. Gonna, you know, um, what you have here is the ability to stream more Wi-Fi to more devices. In, in other words, a, a you know, much more bandwidth. Um, you're able to... Uh, uh, have a lot of devices streaming simultaneously and uh, without any issues whatsoever. So that'll be interesting when we test this thing to see really how this works out for me in the long run, especially if I'm, I'm trying to remedy an issue that I have of connectivity. Okay, guys, so we talked a little bit about my Apple devices and why I was moving towards the, the Netgear Nighthawk and why I purchased that. One thing that I did lose by going to this is that I already had built into my airport time capsule. Basically, it's a backup device, you know, on top of being a repeater or a Wi-Fi extender. 
or just a router period. Um, so when purchasing whatever router you're purchasing, if, if you're in a situation like that, you need to make sure that you can expand off of that some sort of backup device or backup network, if you will. And I plan on doing that, and I'll get into that here in just a second. But let's talk about the, the product as it, as it comes out of the box here. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Um, this thing, uh, these are two wings that you just flip up. It's pretty pretty easy to do. Inside these wings are, are, are two antennas each, so for a total of four antennas. Um, and also you've got right here along the top, you've got all of these LED lights that indicate connectivity, um, whether you've got good internet coming in, et cetera. That's pretty important for you to, to, to have that, you know, right there with an eyesight for you. But, you know, speaking of those LED lights, there's also a switch over here that, that which is a nice feature for people that don't like all those bright LED lights. Me personally, I don't mind it here in my studio. I think it's fine. It adds a little bit of mood to the room, so I'll leave mine on. But back to the backup devices, okay? So with this, what I can do is I can add uh, an external backup drive um, through these two USB ports. Uh, these are USB 3.0. And what I intend on doing is adding a disk station. Uh, Synology is probably the brand that I'm going to go with. And I'm probably going to be looking at a DS218 Plus because I kind of th think that, that that meets the criteria that I need. And I can store all my media on that. I can back up all my devices that I want, which is quite handy. So I'll remedy that issue here very soon. But also what you have next to that, you've got all of these uh, Ethernet ports or local area network connections. You can hook up to five uh, devices up through hardwire if you want to. There's your main Internet wire that uh, out of the back of the modem. Uh, you plug in the Ethernet cable right into that port right there to get good connectivity from your modem. Um, and then right here, you've got an on-off switch. And this, of course, is the power port, uh, which I'm not showing you right now. I don't have the, the cord and the, and the power plug uh, in front of me. But anyway, that would be where you'd want to plug that. Um, so look at this thing, man. It, 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 it's like so modern technology, man. I mean, it, it looks like a TIE fighter, really, man. I think it's pretty cool kind of adds to my decor and, and my my uh, studio here, so I'm pretty happy about that. So here, uh, we're going to get in. Okay, everybody. So let's now, let's get into some of the some of the features uh, that are on the app that you can get. Now, first of all, you, you, you want to download this, like I said, from your, uh, your app store. Um, so let's just type that in. Let's go Netgear. Ah, there we go. And there it is right there. Um, I actually already have it. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, open it. You just download it and just open it. So there we go. Uh, so I wanted to show you some of the some of the features that you can that, that are on this. Um, first of all, let's go to the home page here. Okay, so here are all, uh, this is the list of things you can do, you know, settings where you can go in and you got router settings, Wi-Fi settings, guest Wi-Fi settings, remote management, where you can set this up to where you can access this thing remotely. Like if you're sitting at a restaurant somewhere and something's going on and you need to turn something off, um, you can reboot from here. You can look at, um, to see whether or not you've got any, uh, like firmware updates and so on. So, but let's go here. You've got a device manager, which lets you know what's currently on. You can turn each device off. Um, so right now I've got all of these on my, my 5G spectrum. And this one is on, on my wired. It's, it's hardwired right here. Um, let's check the internet speed. This is something that's pretty awesome. You can check your router speed here. Let's do this. Let's go through a series of these. Let's check this out, man. Okay, so there you go, man. I that's it's it's telling me right there that my internet speeds are extremely fast. Um, stream 4k movies, play online games, etc. Let me, let me tell you guys, this is, this is what's amazing. My download speeds before I got this router were right around 140 down. My upload speeds are about the same and my ping's pretty healthy as well. All those things are pretty critical, uh, when you're, um, 
uploading and downloading. You also get uh, the history of your download speeds and everything. Look at this. I mean, it's consistent, man. I've been checking this thing since I got it. So, so you have that. Um, you can set up guest Wi-Fi. Um, there's a number of things that you can set up from this from this app. So, all right. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to get online, like I told you before, and we're going to check out quality of service. So hang in there. We'll be right back with that. Okay, guys, so here I am on the Netgear Nighthawk router login uh, website. It's um, The address is routerlogin.net. You can find this information on the back of your router. Uh, you will have a serial number if you can't find your password or admin name. But if you know your admin name and your password, you would, you would enter it and it would bring you to this particular screen. And um, I'm on this screen specifically because on a lot of the other features that you see here, um, you are going to be revealing sensitive information. So it's pretty important that you do not um, reveal this information. So I would, I would show you guys, but I don't want to uh, give out my information. So there you go. From here, you can you can do a lot of different things. Just like the user interface on the app, you get a little deeper here, like quality of service. And quality of service is important because um, it basically, with quality of service, you can set the priorities for which devices um, are to get priority, if you will. Um, and any tech guy will tell you that it's pretty important on a router. That's one thing that I did not have on my Apple uh, routers. There was no quality of service, so I couldn't be selective in, in how I use that. So um, you can do you can take a speed test from here, which is pretty important. As a matter of fact, let's try this. Let's see. See where we come in at. And as you can see here, the last download um, that I got, I got 327.93 down and almost 12 up. Now, it's important to understand that this is not um, uh, this is not Wi-Fi download speeds. This is theoretical speeds. In other words, this is the speed coming out of the back of your modem through the router. So this is what the router is receiving. Okay, so it just finished its update. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I love the speeds there. That's pretty darn fast, guys. Uh, I was about 100 down before uh, I got this new router. So I'm pretty happy with this setup and the things that you can do with it. Um, if you like this video and you want more information on it, you can always contact us on our uh, website, which is uh, partscountagurus.com. Uh, we have a section up there, uh, ask, ask us a question. Um, you can reach out to us uh, if this was interesting to you or if you want to hear more stuff about what Netgear is offering or if there's something else you would like for us to review, uh, we would be happy to do that. Um, we do a lot of these videos. If you'll go over to our YouTube channel, which is Parts Counter Gurus, and uh, while you're there, hit the subscribe button. You can also hit the like button and ring that bell. All of that helps us out. Um, and keep us in mind, If again, if there's some equipment out there that you'd like to see us review, reach out to us on partscounterguru.com, and we'll be glad to um, uh, look into it for you and respond to you. But please make sure you leave some contact information for us there on that page. So until the next time, this is Jay with partscounterguru.com. Thanks for watching.